Hello everyone and welcome to another video about SAS Blazor. In this video, we're going to discuss one of the most requested, more polemic and more debated topics about SAS, that is a, a load testing. How many users can you have? And there is a lot of, uh, we have done a meetup about it. We have a lot of content, a uh, Linux load testing as well. So. Uh, we came across this uh, service, Azure Load Testing, and actually, if you see, it's really new. It's just from May of this year, and this is still in preview, so all the results are still, again, uh, something that they are working on, but I think that it's a really interesting uh, service. So basically, here, they are using the G-Meter to do load testing, and you can see here how it works, and you can see the percentage and so on, but the great thing is the simplicity. So you can add your own G-Meter scripts and everything, but if you just put a new URL, they create a, a script for you and test the scale and give you a lot of uh, insight in the metric. So basically right here is the quick start and you can see here how you create a load testing a resource and how you configure it and how do you put the metrics that you are uh, interested in and so on. So for this uh, test, we actually have a Blazor application loaded on Azure, of course, uh, just a simple Blazor server one and we have a SAF. The SAF is a simple one as well, just a domain object with two records. So besides that, we are only focusing on the part of the app service. Uh, this Azure load testing preview service, you can do it for a queue, for a SQL database. We definitely have an SQL database that is serverless, so it's a scaling on demand. That's basically what it is. And right here, if we go back to our Let's go to our test. So we have our service lab, uh, here, SAP load testing, and let's check. The first one that we're gonna see is the only Blazor. So we have a Blazor uh, server application in an Azure. We put the URL here and you can actually come here and configure your test. Let's leave it running. You can configure what is the name of your test, what is the, the if you see here, this is the, the script. What is the parameter? We have the, the URL that we want. Basically, we put a four engine instance because Microsoft recommend 250 uh, threads by engine. So threads meaning uh, users. So 250 users by four engine will be 1,000 users, the duration of the test. And basically that's it. You can add more metrics and a few more things. Then you have to run it at least one. If you see we run it here with just five users. And then uh, in this test, it still will not give you basically server side metrics. Okay, what mm, client side metrics, the resize in that I let me go back, get laser testing, filter user side. I think that I is put in it there because we have run it several times, but the idea here is you always have to run it once. In this case, you can see the virtual uh, number of users, you can see the response times in the client side. You can see the request average and so on. After that, you will be able to come here and set up what is the component that you're testing, okay, Blazor uh, load testing this sub service. And when you do that, then the, the configure metrics will be enabled. And then you can see, okay, I want the response time, CPU, average, average memory working set and so on. So with that one, we run it on Blazor server, a test with the uh, four engines and 250, thread by engine, 250 users by four engines will be 1,000 users. You can see here in the client side, the response time is like 361 milliseconds. You can see here the request by seconds and the server side metrics, you can see the request, you can see the response time, that is 200 milliseconds, 200 something. And you can see the CPU time here and you can even see the memory, 23 megabytes. But if you see, let me go back, you can even click on it, get inside that, but if you see as, as the amount of users start increasing, the memory it went up to 628. This is a regular uh, Blazor server application. And uh, interesting here, we have 1,000 uh, users and a great performance, let's call it that. And now let's go back to the stuff that is the one that we want. So we did the first one that it was with the a standard one, that's the, the one that when you create a free tire, this is a, 
1.75 gigabyte of memory and only 100 total ACU. And then we did another one with the P2V3 that is minimum 125. It has 16 gigabyte of memory and have four CPU. So we are just testing one server. This is not a scale out. This is just a scale up in the same server. So this first one, if you see the response time was almost 11 uh, seconds. And I want to mention here that because we also have a uh, Azure SQL serverless, I didn't put it in consideration that the first time that you're accessing that uh, site, the database takes longer because you have to, to, to basically get, get out of first standby. You see, this is the, the response time. It's a little, a lot higher. And you can even see here the response time on the server. It was almost 10 seconds. And the interesting thing here is that you can even go the memory. Memory was a little bit uh, steady, like 200 something megabytes. Now, the great thing here is like you can even click here and see more information about the app service in general. And it will tell you what they think that is actually really slow for your system. If you see 11.1 .1 is something that is not a good behavior. But if you click on it, it will even show you what are the, the, the modules that they think that are causing this. If you see, they analyze 3,000 requests and they are uh, the thing that is consuming the most time is the ASP.NET Core module B2. So basically, that's the, the, the place or the, the, the core, the ASP.NET Core, uh, because every place for application, as we know, is a, is a ASP.NET Core application. Now, if we go back to our other test and let's select, we have a couple more, but in this one, we were just still learning. I put here 500 by engine instead of, instead of 250 by engine like Microsoft recommend. But this last one, let's see. You see, the response time is 1.25 seconds. 1,000 concurrent users at the same time. We have like a lot of requests by seconds. And if you see here, our response time on the server side is 968 milliseconds. That I think that is a really decent. And our CPU time, let's go scroll down. And our average more working set. So if you see, the memory also start going up as you get more and more users. Now, let's close here and let's do the same thing here. If we click here, we can see more information about the, the server. This is just a first test that we're doing and we're computing with you. As you see here, the CPU is starting to get a lot of uh, heat. The performance on the app is good. And if we click on it, we can see here, I think, I think this is one of the tests where I put more thread by engine than the recommended amount by, the, by Microsoft. Now, another really neat thing is that you can compare them. So you can select all of them. If you see this one fail, and you can compare and see the difference between, between them. And you can see this one that is really high is the one that actually has only 1.75 gigabyte of memory. And I think that this was not even the issue here. It was the CPU that it has this uh, 100 total ACU. You can see again, virtual user here. You can actually uncheck and check all the tests to see what's going on. So this is just, we are starting to play with it. We just wanted to put it over there in case somebody else from the community wanna play with it. Or actually the same, the express team. Because one thing that I, I have to mention, this actual load testing service is not free. So they have a pricing that you can look it up online and depending on the, uh, the amount of engines that you're using, the amount of users that you are adding, it will have a, a small cost, but as much uh, users you add, as much engines you add, of course, that cost will be increasing. So where you're testing with it, I do believe that if we check the result from the Blazor one, that was 300 milliseconds and the SAF that was 941 milliseconds. I think that is really promising what we're going to be able to accomplish with just one server. Not load balancing, not uh, scaling uh, out, just scaling up with the same server. So that would be my video for today. Okay, if you have any input. Well, like, no, the only part that I want to highlight is that there is nothing better than numbers to, to show the real behavior. 
So this is a, a real life test somehow. So uh, that's the only thing is that uh, whenever you're planning an application, what you need to do is measure how we'll behave today and how we'll behave in one year or in three years, four years. Because you know that the most common cases that we have in the office is that my application was working well the first day, but it's been like one year and it's not working anymore. So you, with a tool like this, you can foretell how it's going to behave in the future when your audience grows. Yeah, and it's good to mention that we are learning this tool right now as well. I'm going to get more in deep in the GMeter scripts. So we're going to start doing a script that actually do more meaningful things right now. It's just uh, here in the homepage. We are actually starting to understand what all these uh, comparison metrics, how all these things are tied together. So, and right now we are only seeing just the, the app service. We want to see the type, also do a load test into the database. So we want to basically start now using the service that gives you a lot of power to see how we can give you guys more numbers. But I wanted to put it out there. If you guys have uh, the opportunity in your company, in your, just do some tests as well and share it with us. We would love to like actually put some numbers in the load test and finally answer the question how many users SAP application can have, especially now with SAP Okay, that will be all for this video and see you in the next one.